Uh, welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. Uh, we are discussing module 9 where we are going to use genome engineering technologies uh, in disease modeling. In this lecture we are going to discuss about the IPSC uh, models. Before that uh, let us briefly discuss about the relationship between cells, tissues, organs and body. Uh, it is uh, known to you uh, that our body cells arise from a, a single source. Uh, but over the time our body has over 200 different cell types and each cell type is specialized to carry out a particular function either alone for example the red blood cells uh, but usually uh, the cells uh, form a particular uh, tissue. The different tissues then combine and form specific organs which are like factories where every type of cell has its own job. And you know uh, that our body is constituted by various organs which function together. Let us now uh, go to the phenotype and genotype of these 200 different cell types our body have. All these 200 different cell types because they arise from a single origin within an individual or human are genetically identical. The variation in these cell types arise due to differential regulation and expression of genes. Certain genes are expressed in certain cell types uh, while they remain silent in others. Now our body has some kind of very special cells which we call as stem cells. These are not specialized cells unlike the other 200 plus different type of cells which we have which are uh, specialized cells. Stem cells are unspecialized cells which are able to change and transform into other types found in the body. This process is called cell differentiation and it leads to the development of all types of other cells of the body. So, you can see a stem cell can give rise to muscle cell, fat cell, bone cell, blood cell, immune cell and so on. Let us now study about a specialized type of cell called stem cell. Uh, this stem cell is unlike the 200 plus differentiated cells that we have just discussed. In fact, stem cells are unspecialized cells which are able to change and transform into other types of cells found in the body. This process is called cell differentiation and it leads to the development of all types of other cells of the body uh, from the stem cell. So, a stem cell can give rise to a muscle cell, fat cell, epithelial cell, nervous cell, blood cell, etc. And in nature, a stem cell is produced from a stem cell. Unlike these differentiated cells which are produced uh, from a stem cell, a stem cell gives rise to uh, another stem cell. We will discuss about the stem cell division and the differentiation in another slide. Uh, stem cells are able to differentiate into any type of cell of an organism and have the ability of self renewal and they fall into the following classes like uh, unipotent, uh, oligopotent, multipotent, uh, pluripotent and totipotent. There are several steps of specialization and the developmental potency uh, of a stem cell is reduced with each step. For example, a unipotent stem cell is not able to differentiate into as many types of cells as a pluripotent stem cell. What are unipotent? Unipotent stem cells and what are their characteristics? The unipotent stem cells are characterized by the narrowest differentiation capabilities and a special property of dividing repeatedly. Their latter features make them a promising candidate for therapeutic use in regenerative medicine. These cells are only able to form uh, one type of cell, example, uh, dermatocytes. So, if our target is regenerative medicine uh, using dermatocytes, then the unipotent stem cells are the best candidates because we will be sure that this cell type follows a particular uh, lineage. Oligopotent stem cells however can differentiate into several cell types unlike uh, unipotent stem cells. A myelid stem cell is an example that can divide into white blood cells. but not uh, red blood cells. 
The next type of stem cell we have are the multipotent stem cells. They have a narrower spectrum of differentiations and then the pluripotent stem cells, but they can specialize in discrete cells of specific cell uh, lineages. So, you can see here the multipotent stem cells which can uh, differentiate and uh, become uh, mesoderm from which the blood cells, muscle cells and bone cells can be formed or it can become uh, either gut cell, lung cell or liver cell or it can become the brain and the skin cells. After differentiation, for example, a hematopoietic stem cell uh, can become an uh, oligopotent cell. Uh, its differentiation ability is restricted to cells of its lineage. However, some multipotent cells are capable of conversion into unrelated cell types we suggest uh, naming them as uh, pluripotent cells. So, here you, the, you can see uh, the schematics of a oocyte development and formation of stem cells in this figure. Uh, the blastocell which is formed from oocytes consists of uh, embryonic stem cells that later differentiate into uh, mesoderm, ectoderm or endoderm cells uh, and which gives rise to different number of cells as already uh, discussed. The next type of stem cell are the pluripotent stem cells. Uh, they form cells of all germ layers, but not extra embryonic structures such as the placenta. Embryonic stem cells are an example of uh, these type of uh, PSCs. The ESCs are derived from the inner cell mass of pre-implantation embryo. Another example is induced uh, pluripotent stem cell, which is the focus of today's lecture. And these are derived from the epiblast layer of implanted embryos, but there are certain chemical treatments or uh, other kind of uh, interventions through which these are generated. The pluripotency is a continuum starting from completely pluripotent cells such as the ESCs and IPSCs and ending on representatives with less potency uh, multi to oligo or uh, unipotent cells which we have discussed in the earlier slides. One of the methods to assess their activity and spectrum is a, the teratoma formation assay. Uh, IPSCs are artificially generated from somatic cells as I have already indicated and they function similarly to the uh, pluripotent stem cells. Their culturing and utilizations are very promising for present and future regenerative medicine. In this lecture, after the discussion on the basic of stem cells, we will be discussing about using genome editing technology uh, in, in conjunction with IPSC uh, for creating uh, disease models. Another type of stem cells are the totipotent stem cells. They are able to divide and differentiate into cells of the whole organism. That is why they are called totipotent. It has the highest differentiation potential and allows cells to form both embryo and extra embryonic structures. One example of a totipotent cell is a zygote which is formed after a sperm fertilizes an egg. These cells can later develop either into any of the three germ layers or form a placenta. After approximately 4 days, the blastocyst uh, inner cell mass becomes uh, pluripotent. The structure, this structure is the source of uh, pluripotent uh, cells. Let us now discuss about one uh, important characteristics of stem cell division. So, like in mitotic uh, division, a stem cell uh, gives rise to two daughter cells, but here the division is something very, very unique than somatic uh, cell division. Uh, a stem cell gives rise to two daughter cells. And in this case, both the cells may be either stem cells or either uh, differentiated cells. In these type of division, uh, we call symmetric division has taken place. A stem cell gives rise to either two stem cell or two differentiated cells. Stem cells have a very unique type of uh, division, which is known as asymmetric cell division whereby 
A stem cell give rise to mixed population of cells like it may give rise to both a stem cell and a, a differentiated cell. So, this asymmetric division do not give rise to two identical daughter cells rather it gives rise to two unidentical daughter cells out of which one is a stem cell while the other is a uh, differentiated cell. What is uh, differentiation? Stem cells can differentiate uh, into muscle cells, fat cells, bone cells, blood cells, nervous cells, epithelial cells, immune cells and reproductive cells and so on. This has been uh, discussed. Now, these differentiation pathways are actually influenced by many molecular and uh, genetic uh, factors and they are also uh, the main source of specialized cells for particular tissues and finally, uh, they give rise to a specialized organ in the body. So, the stem cells are very, very important uh, for the survival of an organism and if the organism is having any kind of disease, the stem cells can be used as a therapy. Stem cells also can be um, um, modulated and uh, we can also form uh, disease models out of these. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to deal with that uh, to a large extent, uh, particularly from the point of view of uh, genome editing. Now, once these stem cells, uh, a stem cell differentiate into any of these cells that we have listed, uh, can these differentiated cells revert back to their uh, original uh, state or simply if they can differentiate it back into a uh, stem cell, can a muscle cell become a stem cell? Uh, the answer is no uh, as far as uh, uh, the natural uh, condition uh, prevails, uh, but today we have the technology of reverting back differentiated cells uh, into stem cells and that is what we are going to uh, discuss in this lecture uh, again. Uh, let us look into the roots of differentiation and uh, de-differentiation. We know that stem cells give rise to different kinds of tissue specific cells and uh, somatic uh, cells. However, uh, the somatic cell division uh, gives rise only to somatic cell uh, inside the body under normal conditions. But we can also uh, de-differentiate the somatic cells following de-differentiation path as shown in path number one, number two uh, under in vitro favorable factors and conditions and convert these stem cells, uh, somatic cells uh, into stem cells. The stem cells which are produced from somatic cells uh, in, under in vitro favorable uh, conditions are known as the induced pluripotent stem cells because we have induced the uh, somatic cells to de-differentiate back into a stem cell and we simply name them as IPSC. And uh, these IPSCs or stem cells can again be de-differentiated uh, sorry differentiated and form into somatic cells, but using this pathway a muscle cell can be de-differentiated back into stem cell and once it becomes a stem cell, uh, it can become any of the cells as shown in, in, in this picture uh, including becoming uh, muscle cells again. So, this is in brief the IPSC technology. Uh, we will be discussing how uh, this was uh, developed. One thing we need to remember is that uh, induced uh, pluripotent stem cells are uh, pluripotent and we know the potency of a pluripotent stem cell is uh, quite uh, wide and large and it will actually uh, generate lot of tissue specific cells and these IPSCs are generated artificially uh, from uh, somatic cells. So, these pictures uh, tell us about 
the changes in the potency of stem cells in human body development and we already have discussed about the various potencies starting from uh, unipotent to oligopotent uh, to multipotent to pluripotent to uh, totipotent. Uh, the potency uh, ranges from the uh, pluripotent cells of the blastocytes to unipotent cells of a specific tissue in human body such as the skin, uh, central nervous system or bone marrow. A reversed pluripotency can be achieved by the formation of induced pluripotent stem cells using either octoma binding uh, transcription factor OCT4, sex determining region Y, SOX2, Kruppel like factor 4, KLF4 or the uh, MIG gene. So, you can see here a zygote uh, giving rise to the embryonic stem cells which are uh, pluripotent and as uh, time uh, progresses and differentiation uh, stages uh, progresses, we have different kinds of cells and tissues and organs uh, being formed in this developmental uh, process uh, which gives rise to a, a complete adult uh, from a uh, zygote. Now, uh, these adult has uh, various kinds of adult stem cells which may be uh, multipotent or uh, pluripotent and uh, with these uh, particular factors like OCT4, uh, SOX2, KLF4 and MIC, we can reconvert them back into induced uh, pluripotent uh, cells. So, this is an overview of this IPSC technology. So, the original discussion that whether stem cells which differentiate into various kinds of somatic cells and if the somatic cells can be formed back into uh, stem cells is now clear to you. Uh, with these certain factors like these, we can uh, reverse this uh, differentiated cell uh, into a stem cell by the process of de-differentiation. So, how this technology got developed uh, step by step starting from clone frogs to the development of IPSCs, uh, it took uh, many uh, years and many uh, interesting uh, research to happen uh, which uh, was uh, uh, happening uh, phase wise and uh, in, 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 a, in over a, a long duration of time in the way uh, these mega city was built over historical uh, time points. This is the experiment of uh, John uh, Garden uh, who cloned a frog using intact nuclei uh, from the somatic cells of a, a genopus tadpole in uh, 1962. Uh, the question here was whether the nucleus of a fully differentiated cell uh, still contained the factors and tools necessary to be pluripotent or those tools are lost as the cell uh, matures. And this paper uh, published in Journal of Embryology and Experimental Morphology by the title The Developmental uh, Capacity of Nuclei Taken from Intestinal Epithelium Cells of uh, Feeding Tadpoles is considered a landmark uh, paper uh, in this uh, progress. Uh, 35 years later, uh, Sir Ian Wilmot and his team used the same uh, SCNT strategy of cellular reprogramming. In the cloning of Dolly the sheep, uh, uh, the first mammalian to be generated by uh, somatic uh, cloning and uh, Sir uh, John Gurdon uh, was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine in 2012 and uh, here you can see his picture at the annual scholars dinner of Magdalene College, uh, Cambridge. Uh, the scientific breakthroughs in uh, somatic uh, cloning established that the nuclei of differentiated somatic cells contain all the necessary genetic information to generate a whole organism, thereby answering the question whether the nucleus of a fully differentiated cell still contain the factors and tools necessary to be pluripotent or whether these tools are lost. The tools are not lost, they, they have the information, genetic information. Uh, to generate a whole organism and the egg cell contains the necessary factors uh, to bring about such uh, reprogramming. Uh, this picture uh, 
is a schematic picture uh, because of uh, copyright issues I could not get a uh, picture uh, labeled in English. Uh, you can try to find out a picture of uh, corresponding uh, similar uh, representation. Let us now discuss about the development of mouse embryonic uh, stem cell stem cells uh, and cell lines. So, in 1981 uh, Martin events uh, Matthew Kaufman and Gaylor Martin uh, led to the generation of uh, mouse uh, embryonic stem cell lines. Uh, Gail Roberta uh, isolated pluripotent stem cells from mouse embryos and coined the term uh, embryonic uh, stem cell and which is now simply referred to as uh, ESCs. So, you observed that the cells clumped together in a manner similar to that of an developing embryo and that the cells outside the clump uh, look different than the cells inside the clump. Those differences were similar to the germ layers that embryos form during development. See so, call, call those clumps of embryonic stem cells embryoed bodies because they were conglomerations resembling uh, embryos. She also determined that injecting mice with embryonic stem cells caused tumors to form at the injection uh, location. So, this is the paper on establishment uh, in culture of pluripotent pluripotential cells from mouse embryos by Evans and uh, Kaufman. A later uh, senior uh, Yamanaka and uh, uh, Takahashi developed the mouse uh, induced pluripotent stem cells in 2006 through the use of a retrovirus to deliver into a somatic cell which was a mouse fibroblast. A combination of four reprogramming transcription factors. These are known as the OSCOM cocktail uh, and uh, these are already uh, discussed earlier. Uh, you have the octoma binding transcription factor 3 by 4, uh, SOX2, the sex determining reason why box 2. KLF4 or Krupel like factor and CMIC which has been uh, nicknamed. And this remarkable work was published uh, in, in the journal Cell and the success of these experiment Yamanaka experiments made the ethical debate about pluripotent stem cell research uh, largely obsolete as they established a robust method to derive human pluripotent cells without the use of use of human embryos. Earlier to obtain the uh, human uh, pluripotent stem cells, uh, the embryos were considered as the uh, important or primary source and uh, uh, handling or working with human embryos was uh, very, very controversial and having many ethical and, and legal uh, issues. Now, uh, since uh, these development of the uh, Yamanaka technique or experiments, uh, those kind of uh, issues were settled for once and all. Uh, we can take any uh, somatic cell like a mouse fibroblast or a skin cell and then can de-differentiate de them with uh, reprogramming transcription factors called OSCOM uh, factors and generate pluripotent stem cells. Uh, the IPC technology promised to solve uh, complications uh, to that were anticipated from immune rejections as well of uh, heterologous uh, human embryonic stem cells derived tissues as it would allow for the generation of patient specific autologous pluripotent cells and uh, the uh, derived tissues. Not only the legal or ethical uh, problems were solved by this uh, technology, but it is also addressed the biological uh, problems uh, uh, like immune uh, rejection. So, it is a really a landmark uh, discovery and uh, it, it changed the course of uh, science uh, in a big way. Yamanaka and Takahashi quickly demonstrated that the same set of uh, factors uh, capable of reprogramming mouse cells also worked in uh, human cells. So, uh, this was one of the biggest discovery. So, we can uh, de-differentiate our somatic cells into the stem cells and from those stem cells we can generate multiple uh, tissue specific cells. And those tissue specific cells uh, can be uh, of various kinds can be assembled together to uh, form uh, uh, different organs. So, the science of uh, regenerative medicine got a big boost by the 
uh, by this kind of disruptive uh, innovation or technology. Interestingly, numerous experiments in the last couple of years in mouse and human cells also revealed that combinations of other sets of transcription factors can be equally potent in, in reprogramming cells to a pluripotent state. This has added to the valuable insights into the transcriptional pluripotency uh, networks and how cells establish uh, pluripotency. In 2007, Yamanaka and associates applied the uh, reprogramming method for adult human fibroblasts to generate human iPSCs and uh, James uh, Thompson's group reported the generation of a human um, uh, 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 induced pluripotent stem cells using a different delivery system, the lentivirus and a different set of uh, four uh, factors, uh, OCT 3 by 4, SOX2 nanog and lean 28. So, what are the techniques for restoring developmental potential uh, to a uh, somatic uh, nucleus? Uh, you have various uh, techniques for this like uh, nuclear transfer, uh, cell fusion, uh, direct reprogramming and cell uh, explantation. Uh, in nuclear transfer, the genetic material of an oocyte or zygote is replaced with that of a differentiated cell such as a fibroblast following development to the blastocyte stage, pluripotent NTES cells can be derived as far as from the uh, fertilized embryos. So, the advantage here is uh, indistinguishable from embryo derived uh, embryonic stem cell. The disadvantage is that technically quite challenging sources for oocytes and zygotes uh, also uh, having certain uh, disadvantages. The next technique is uh, cell fusion. So, here you have a fibroblast and a embryonic stem cell. If we fuse it, they become a tetraploid uh, embryonic uh, stem cell. Uh, this is a technically uh, very uh, straightforward uh, method and the disadvantage is that the fusion is uh, sometimes inefficient and uh, the reprogrammed cells are not deployed but uh, tetraploid. So, hybridization between the embryonic stem cell and the somatic cells yield these uh, tetraploid uh, embryonic stem cell lines, uh, but they are not uh, 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 deployed that is the uh, biggest uh, program. In the direct reprogramming, the retroviral mediated introduction of a small number of uh, transcription uh, factors is sufficient to confer a, a pluripotent stem uh, cell, uh, 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 somatic cell into a pluripotent uh, phenotype. So, here this fibroblast got converted uh, due to this direct uh, reprogramming through retroviral delivery of factors into a induced uh, pluripotent uh, cell. This is also technically uh, very straightforward or simple and it uh, gives autologous uh, to fibroblast uh, donor. So, the problems of uh, uh, immune rejection and uh, compatibility is uh, addressed uh, straight uh, forward here. However, uh, disadvantage is that it uses uh, oncogenic retroviruses and uh, transients. So, it may have some kind of uh, potential harm in the future. Another method of restoring developmental potential to a somatic nucleus is through cell explantation. Uh, for example, explantation of testis tissue from neonatal and adult mice into appropriate culture conditions has been shown to result in the production of multipotent and smart, smart, uh, spermatogonial uh, cells or mast cells. This method also uh, technically straightforward gives fully autologous uh, to donor. And Disadvantage is that limited sources and uh, therapeutic uh, utility and it carry uh, male germ uh, cell imprints. Look into this uh, uh, picture uh, which is uh, giving a symmetric uh, representation of Weddington's epigenetic uh, landscape and uh, there is a fine line between uh, tumorogenesis and regeneration upon in vivo uh, reprogramming. So, we have cells here uh, which are uh, totipotent and then we have uh, these cells which are uh, pluripotent and then we have 
partially uh, reprogrammed the cells and then we have terminally uh, differentiated uh, cells over here. The lighter sets represent de novo cells generated by uh, reprogramming uh, events. So, uh, this is the fine line which divides uh, the regeneration from uh, tumoral uh, genesis and transdifferentiation uh, drives direct conversion between specific cell types, but lacks the uh, induction of cell division that maximizes the repopulation of an injured site. Uh, so here you can see uh, in B uh, sustained reprogramming to uh, pluripotency leads to excessive and uncontrolled proliferation and random uh, redifferentiation into multiple lineages that results in the generation of uh, teratomas. In C we have in vivo reprogramming to a pluripotent or a pluripotent like state may provide teratoma free tissue regeneration provided that the expression of pluripotency features and proliferations are uh, strictly transient. And in D we have uh, partial reprogramming uh, accompanied by transient proliferation that may replenish among others the pool of progenitor like cells crucial to maintain tissue homeostasis uh, upon uh, injury. So, whenever there is a uh, regeneration phenomena occurring, uh, if any kind of imbalance occurs and it crosses the fine line, uh, the, the body may end up uh, in, in promoting uh, uh, tumoral uh, genesis. So, this is important uh, from the uh, translational point of view uh, whenever we are considering IPSCs, uh, which will be later uh, differentiated into various tissue types. And along with it, we are going to uh, use the uh, CRISPR uh, Cas9 or any of the JLFN or Talon uh, genome editing technologies. So, any of these uh, technologies uh, having some kind of element or factor which can drive uh, a, a, a IPSC towards uh, the tumor genesis uh, has to be considered in the overall uh, scheme of things. Uh, and uh, now there are a lot of work going on in that area uh, to make these uh, kind of uh, therapies uh, safer. So, let us look into the timelines of development of two things, the development of IPSCs and the development of genome editing technologies. More or less you know about uh, both the uh, timelines uh, separately, but when, uh, when we look into them uh, uh, together an interesting uh, scenario uh, emerges and in uh, 2007 uh, this is the year where the generation of human IPS is from uh, adult uh, fibroblast uh, took place. Okay. And then uh, same year uh, we have the gene correction in human cells uh, using gene finger nucleases uh, happening. And in 2008 uh, the initiation of disease modeling and, and, and drug discovery using IPSC derived in vitro uh, systems uh, was started. And uh, in 2011 talents used for gene editing for the generation of uh, mammalian models uh, started. Uh, in 2012, uh, Yamanaka and Garden were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discoveries, which we have already discussed. Uh, discussed. Same year, uh, the first demonstration of CRISPR Cas9 as a genome editing tool was uh, demonstrated. The following year, first IPSC derived cerebral organoid and development of 3D in vitro cultures uh, was reported. While uh, in the uh, genome editing side, human genome editing using CRISPR Cas9 and gene expression regulation via CRISPR I and CRISPR A uh, was uh, were reported. In 2014, the first first clinical trial using IPSC derived retinal cells was reported, and in 2016, the development of organoids differentiation uh, protocol for specific uh, brain regions was uh, reported and the same year the development of base editors were reported in the genome 
uh, editing uh, domain. In 2018, uh, we had a report of the RNA targeting and modification with uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and in 2019, uh, more than uh, 100 iPSC based therapies involved in the uh, clinical trials and uh, the prime uh, editing guide RNA, PEG RNA was reported uh, the same year. Uh, in 2021 20, uh, also there were some uh, similar developments in both of the fields uh, which has not been included in this uh, timeline. Uh, starting from the basic biological studies on uh, human induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh, CRISPR-Cas9 system has been used in different ways uh, depending on the purpose of the research as follows. Uh, gene knockout is mainly applied to study gene function because it is the most used tool to establish a connection between a biological event and the upstream molecular uh, mechanism. Starting from the basic biological studies on human induced pluripotent stem cells. A CRISPR-Cas9 system has been used in different ways depending on the purpose of the research as follows, particularly in gene knockout and gene knock-in. Uh, in, in gene knockout, mainly uh, it is applied to study the gene function because it is the most used tool to establish a connection between a biological event and the upstream molecular mechanism. Gene knock-in with the introduction of an exogenous nucleotide sequence is typically responsible for the identification of specific markers in stem cells uh, research. Transcription activation or repression uh, with uh, Cas9 variants uh, like D-Cas9 are de derived, uh, deprived of their endonucleotic uh, activity, uh, but maintain unaltered uh, ability to generate the gRNA Cas9 complex. Uh, these variants could be fused with transcriptional activator or suppressor in order to modulate the transcription of endogenous genes. In the case of genome wide screening, gRNA libraries provide a large volume of genes for analyzing results through sequencing data, while RNA interference libraries knock down gene expression at the mRNA level. CRISPR-Cas9 is able to target gene knockout or, or uh, the transcription uh, inhibitors. Let us see the workflow of research involving human induced pluripotent stem cells and uh, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing uh, for the investigation of new drugs and therapeutic uh, uh, alternatives. So, we have a healthy person here and an affected person here. Uh, cells are taken from the healthy persons as well as the diseased persons and after reprogramming we have the wild type uh, human IPSCs and the affected uh, human IPSCs. And these are uh, used for CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing experimentation where we go for knockout, knock-in, uh, transcription activation or repression or uh, genome-wide uh, screening as discussed in the earlier slide and they are used for drug development and monitoring of the uh, protein doses uh, in, in, in drug screening then in uh, gene therapy and also for immune uh, response uh, strategy. So, this is overall this workflow of the research involving uh, human uh, IPSCs and CRISPR-Cas9 uh, gene editing uh, system. The many uh, applications of uh, CRISPR-Cas9 on human uh, induced pluripotent stem cells uh, have already been uh, developed and uh, there are many uh, therapeutic strategies uh, already uh, reported. Uh, for a detailed discussion on this type of uh, developments, you may uh, read uh, De Mercy et al. Human Genomics uh, 2020. And uh, uh, briefly, we can see what are the uh, progress happening in the area of drug development or gene therapy or uh, drug screening. Uh, in the case of 
drug development, uh, evaluation of PEPT1 mediated intestinal absorption has been studied and intestinal epithelial like uh, cells has been used for the uh, human uh, iPSC uh, derivation. In other cases, uh, they have used neurons and uh, interneurons or even in certain cases hepatocytes, then uh, macrophages and uh, natural uh, killer cells. So, uh, this is the genome editing that was done. Uh, in this column, you can see uh, peptide transporter 1, P pept 1 knockout IPSCs uh, were developed. Here, correction of COC2 mutation was done. In this particular case, for example, correction of COL71 mutation was done. And, uh, in this case, uh, the Duchenne uh, uh, muscular dystrophy, which we have discussed several times earlier, uh, DMD exon 44 uh, knock in was uh, conducted. So, these are the various uh, genome editing uh, uh, being done uh, in, in, in this type of uh, systems, and you can see the corresponding outcome, for example, in PEPT 1 knockout IPSCs. Uh, it is setting the basis for the development of peptide and peptide mimic drugs as possible substrates of PEPT1. Uh, in the uh, case of uh, DMD exon 44 knocking uh, with respect to uh, Duchenne muscular uh, dystrophy, restoration of full protein coding uh, region uh, was uh, done uh, with this CRISPR Cas9. Uh, editing. Similarly, in uh, immune response strategy against uh, HIV infection, uh, you can see we have discussed in length about the uh, uh, 32 base pair uh, deletion in uh, CCR5 gene, both in the uh, case of uh, JDFN, TALEN, and also in the CRISPR Cas9. Here, in this uh, CRISPR Cas9 genome editing, the outcome was the generation of immune cells which are resistant to HIV infection and this is all uh, known to you. And then there are uh, other uh, applications like building a cell platform to test the capacity of candidate antiviral compounds in the case of SARS-CoV-2 infection uh, which is the current challenge uh, to this world. So, you can see that uh, this technology uh, which involves uh, CRISPR-Cas9 application on human induced pluripotent stem cells has a big uh, a potential and uh, uh, not only the other cases even current uh, challenges like SARS-CoV-2 infection uh, has been attempted to be uh, you know solved uh, through this kind of uh, technological uh, approach. So, this table shows some uh, success of non-somatic uh, human pluripotent stem cell uses in uh, hematopoietic uh, research. Uh, for uh, full uh, details, you have to refer to this paper in uh, blood research published in 2014 and the corresponding references against each and every success uh, story uh, is uh, listed over here, which can be easily assessed in the article published in this uh, research paper in blood research. So, success of blood lineage differentiation from uh, uh, human embryonic stem cell and human induced uh, pluripotent stem cells and the success target has been a hematopoietic stem cell, erythrocyte, mature B cells, T cells, natural killer cells, macrophages, dendritic cells. And this uh, tells us about the success of IPSC generation from uh, blood uh, lineages uh, with respect to the targets hematopoietic stem cell, mature B, T cells and in the case of disease modeling which is the main focus of this lecture, we have quite a number of success stories. Uh, for example, the sickle cell anemia, Fanconi anemia, uh, JMML. Uh, CMAT and uh, so on and full details available in these uh, references. Uh, 
Let us now have a discussion on the patient specific IPSC uh, disease modeling and cell based uh, transplantation therapy. Here you can see uh, the mononuclear uh, cells uh, from patients are used for generating IPSC. So, you have a patient over here and blood and fibroblast samples for example are, are taken. And then depending on the source of cells, both memory contained cells such as mature blood cell and memory lacking immature cells, uh, mediated IPSCs are generated and these are the reprogramming factors uh, OSCAM uh, which we have discussed earlier. And uh, you can see here tissue memory contained uh, not uh, contained in the IPSCs. Okay. The subsequent de -differenti differentiation from patient specific IPSCs can be directly used for personalized cell based therapy with proper cell lineages such as blood, muscle and neuron. And in at this stage uh, gene editing technologies such as uh, ZF and Talon and CRISPR will be utilized uh, to fix the genetic error uh, from the affected patients with uh, large uh, even with uh, large uh, DNA uh, deletions. And we know that uh, 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 CRISPR uh, Cas9 has been uh, now can be uh, modified uh, and, and developed into DCAS9 onto which uh, various functional modules can be uh, loaded and then convert it into uh, different uh, functionalities like editing functionalities and so on. So, this picture of all gives us a idea how uh, both the technologies can be merged together and then uh, its potential can be exploited to the uh, fullest extent. So, here we have the IPSC mediated uh, disease treatment. Now, in the case of uh, disease modeling, we may take a, a normal patient cell line, uh, normal person cell line and then in a similar way. Uh, de-differentiate it uh, into a IPSC and through the power of genome editing uh, create the errors uh, which causes the disease. So, this is just that would be the just a, a reverse uh, approach. Now, let us discuss something about uh, precision medicine. So, we have a uh, patient uh, population and uh, they have certain genetic defects maybe or uh, diversity. So, there is a kind of a uh, genetic counseling being done and then uh, from these particular population we get uh, patient derived uh, models uh, which we may uh, go for ex vivo uh, genome editing and then uh, these are subjected to preclinical studies for uh, in vivo validation. And then the patient stratification and tailored approach uh, to the treatments. Uh, is the key in these uh, particular cases because uh, you can see here uh, this population is not uh, homogeneous it is heterogeneous as represented by various uh, colors color coded. And then uh, every type of patient um, uh, depicted by the color coded may have a uh, different kind of a resulting uh, model for a particular disease. Uh, for example, here it is a symbolic uh, for the neuronal disease in a way. And then when finally, the uh, treatment is developed, uh, you can see the corresponding uh, treatments which are tailor made or customized for the particular uh, population as per the color code uh, for symbolic representation here shown are developed. So, uh, here uh, the, the patient are different uh, divided into various classes or stratified and the treatments are also accordingly uh, tailored for each and uh, every patient. So, uh, this treatment is not going to be used here uh, uh, and in, in this case here, but in the conventional treatment approach uh, we do not take care of these diversity. We just develop a, a single type of a therapy either one of them and we try to force that particular therapy into all the patients. So, in such cases only some uh, population in which uh, they have the uh, compatible uh, therapy uh, would respond uh, positively while the others will not uh, respond at all. So, um, uh, in, in IPSC uh, precision medicine, IPSC and uh, gene editing techniques can lead to advances in understanding 
disease mechanisms through in vitro modeling and in the development of novel personalized uh, therapies. Uh, genome editing of patient cells in conjunction with assessment of efficacy and toxicity uh, in in vivo models allows uh, the present uh, patient certification and a tailored approach uh, to uh, treatment. So, uh, use of patient derived induced uh, pluripotent stem cells for uh, neurological disorders. This is a uh, example being uh, given over here. Uh, how do we, we, we use uh, these uh, technologies? Uh, the iPSCs are readily derived uh, from patients and controls through cellular uh, reprogramming. Patient and control derived iPSCs are differentiated into the neuronal type relevant to the specific uh, disease. Gene editing techniques such as CRISPR Cas9 can be utilized to genetically correct the mutations in the iPSCs to obtain isogenic control lines which only differ from the mutated iPSC lines by the genetic variation of interest. Following uh, the genome uh, editing and differentiation of iPSCs, uh, derived cells are used to gain phenotypic insights into the specific disease mechanism through a variety of functional uh, morphological and, and molecular uh, analysis. Once a disease uh, phenotype uh, has been identified, the iPSC derived neuronal cells can be utilized for drug screenings uh, which could accelerate personal therapies for uh, neurological uh, disorders. So, with this we come to the end of uh, part A of iPSCs in disease uh, modeling. We will continue uh, this lecture uh, in part B. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm.